Jeff Hammerbacher, data scientist from Cloudera, co-founder, uh, Hacking Data Twitter handle. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, you're known in the industry, obviously everyone knows you on Twitter, you're on Quora heavily, um, follow you there. Um, at Facebook, you built the data platform for Facebook, one of the guys, main guys there hacking the data over at Facebook. Look what happened, right? I mean, the yeah. data tsunami that Facebook has is amazing. Co-founder of Cloudera. You saw the vision, Amr Awadala always quotes on theCUBE, we've seen the future, no one knows it yet. That was a year and a half ago, now everyone knows it. So, yeah, how do yeah. you feel about that as the co-founder of Cloudera? $40 million in funding, validation, again, more validation. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, I know, sure, it's exciting. I think, uh, you know, as data volumes have grown, and as the complexity of data uh, that is collected and, collected and analyzed has increased, you know, novel software architectures have emerged. And I think what I'm most excited about is the fact that uh, that software is open source, and we're playing a key role in driving where that software is going. And I'm, you know, I think what I'm most excited about on top of that is the commodification of that software. You know, I'm tired of talking about the container in which you put your data. Uh, you know, the, spending the majority of your budget for analytics on the container itself rather than the people and processes to derive business value from that data was always very frustrating to me. So I'm very excited that everyone's going to have a level playing field in the same way that the operating system is a level playing field today with open source Linux. Uh, you know, Hadoop is becoming uh, the Linux of large scale data management and companies are going to begin to differentiate themselves on what they do with that container. We're going to talk about data science in particular. Dave and I have been talking about that since uh, EMC World uh, earlier in the year when they, their whole campaign was around data science. But I want to ask you more on a more of an entrepreneurial note because I know you're, like I said, heavily involved in Quora, you're a big participant in that community, sure. you know, involved in startups, obviously with Cloudera and then the ecosystem. Um, what kind of creativity are you seeing being unleashed with the data? I mean, obviously data is liberating. It's, I wrote a post uh, two and a half years ago, data is the new development kit where developers would ha essentially hack data and that's, that's the development environment. What yeah. kinds of creativity, and we're talking with Mike Olson and with the big data fund, we, we, the old adage of VCs, it's a feature, not a company. But that's not the case anymore, a feature absolutely can be a company now because one creative idea could explode. So okay. what kind of creativity are you seeing on the mark, out in the marketplace from entrepreneurs and companies? Uh, I think a lot of the creativity is happening uh, in the data collection, integration, and preparation stage. Uh, so I think you know, there was a, a tremendous focus uh, over the past several decades on the modeling aspect of data. So we, we really uh, increased the sophistication of our understanding uh, of you know, classification and regression and optimization and all, all of the, uh, the hardcore modeling that gets done. Uh, and now we're seeing, okay, we've got these great tools to use at the end of the pipe, uh, so now how do we get more data pushed through? Uh, th those, those modeling algorithms. So there's a lot of innovative work, you know, in the R community. Uh, the way I use R has really changed a lot since I first started using it, you know, five, ten years ago uh, with a lot of the tools that Hadley Wickham has built for data manipulation. So Plier and Reshape um, have been very influential in terms of how I navigate uh, data in R. And you know, also in Python with the emergence of things like NumPy and Pandas providing similar capabilities for data manipulation. You know, that's very, that's very exciting. And I think you're seeing, starting to see some emerging tools um, for uh, data integration. So tools like you know, Google Refine uh, and the Wrangler project from Berkeley, uh, as well as Cloudera's record breaker um, for schema inference, uh, I think are going to facilitate the transition from uh, a novel data set uh, for which you don't know the structure into a well-structured data set which is amenable to modeling. So how did you approach it? Um, you mentioned before, Jeff, that you were frustrated that all the money was going into the container and not the people in process around the container. Yeah, that sure. was, you were speaking as a practitioner, I presume, Correct, right? yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you had a pa passion, I guess, to solve that problem. Were you thinking at the time, I mean, because it's kind of non-intuitive how you make money if you, you know, get rid of the container, commoditize the container. Yeah. So, were you thinking at the time uh, how you'd uh, make money at this, or did you just say, well, let's just go solve the problem and good things will happen? It was, it was a lot more of the latter. You know, I didn't leave Facebook to start a company. Uh, I just left Facebook because I was ready to do something new. And I knew this was a huge movement, and I felt that you know, it was very Nash and, un and unfinished uh, as, as a software infrastructure. So when the opportunity with Cloudera came along, uh, I really jumped on it, and I've been absolutely blown away by the commercial success we've had. 
Uh, so I, didn't, I certainly didn't set out with a master plan about how to extract um, value from this. My master plan has always been uh, to really drive Hadoop into the background of enterprise infrastructure. I really want it to be as obvious of a choice as Linux. And then, yeah, I kind of assumed that you know, once you have that kind of ubiquity, um, the importance of data management and analysis is so clear that that money, you know, we had Martin Mikos as an investor in Cloudera, and he came in and talked early on to the company, and he had a really great line where he said, at MySQL, we were trying to take a $9 billion industry and turn it into a $3 billion industry, but come out on top. And, you know, that's not dissimilar from our goals at Cloudera. And you see, like, you're, you're, we've talked a lot at this conference and, and others about, um, you know, Hadoop moving from, you know, the fringe to the mainstream commercial enterprises, and all those guys are looking at it. We heard J.P. Morgan Chase today, we're, we're building competitive advantage, we're saving money. Um, those guys do have a master plan to make money. Does that change the dynamic of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, or is that really exciting to you as an entrepreneur? Oh yeah, for sure it's exciting. I mean, what we're trying to do is facilitate their master plan, right? Like we want to we want to identify the commonalities in everyone's master plan and then commoditize it so that they can avoid the undifferentiated heavy lifting that Jeff Bezos points out. Uh, you know, where, you know, no one should be required to uh, to invest tremendous amounts of money in their container anymore, right? They they should really be identifying novel data sources, new algorithms to manipulate that data, the smartest people for using that data, and that's where they should be building their competitive advantage. So what are those commonalities that you see? Presumably that's where <laughs> Ping Lee is going to be putting a lot of his money. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of the commonalities that we see are expressed in the software we build. Um, so we've seen people not just deploy HDFS as a container and you know MapReduce as a uh, processing infrastructure, but they also deploy facilities for both immutable table structured data storage, so things like Hive, as well as mutable table structured data storage with HBase, which has really been uh, driving a lot of our largest engagements, uh, I will say. But in addition, it's not just the container and structured data storage, it's also the higher level tools for authoring processing tasks. So we recently open sourced a system called Crunch, uh, which enables complex workflows uh, in Java that's modeled after Google's very successful Flume Java project. Uh, and we've also you know, brought on board the creator of Uzi for workflow uh, description and management, uh, which is heavily used in a lot of our customer base. So we've identified those tools on top, and we've also built the tools um, for integration. So tools like Flume and Scoop, uh, I think were fairly uh, unique bets by Cloudera in terms of saying, we don't want to just uh, build you a container, we also want to build you the tools to populate that container. Uh, and we've also invested a lot in ODBC drivers, uh, you know, Fuse uh, modules. So we, we, we allow people to consume, you know, to both uh, perform data ingest reliably with open source tools, as well as to consume data stored in the container with their existing tools with which they're comfortable. Yeah, so, you know, we love, we had- Unleashing um, data. Yeah, we had, <laughs> free just, the data. Just listening to you talk, we, we, we love to talk about competition, you know, it's interesting. And sure. And Amaron before, you guys seem so happy about it. I mean, not sort of sanguine about it, not, not freaking out, but when you, when I hear you describe the, the innovations that you're developing, I mean, it underscores the, the effort that yeah. you put into it. And it's not trivial. Yeah, it's not trivial, is it? Sure. I mean, you know, one of the reasons we went out and raised $40 million is we genuinely believe that the market is going to support multiple billion dollar companies, and we want to make sure that we're there first and we're leading. So um, we're, we're, we really feel that we have a pretty insurmountable advantage in this market. We've been doing it for three years. We've got well over 100 customers. Uh, Amr and myself were end users of the technology before we even started the company, so we, we, we have a, a distinct empathy for our customers. Uh, and we really feel that, you know, we know where the market's going. Going. And we're very confident in our product strategy, and I think over the next few years, uh, you know, you guys are going to be pretty uh, excited about the, the stuff we're building, because I know that I'm personally very excited. And yeah, we're very excited about the competition, because number one, more people building open source software has never made me angry. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think yeah. um, I, you know, I fully support, you know, there's a lot of very great, uh, very solid engineers working at places like EMC, IBM, and Hortonworks uh, that are contributing uh, in a really significant fashion to the platform. So that's, you know, <laughs> those guys are not the enemy. Uh, but more importantly, we want to know that the market it will sustain more than one player, right? So the, worst, the biggest risk you take as an entrepreneur is market risk, understanding that there's going to be consumers to support the thing that you want to build. And uh, I, you know, I think it's fabulous that it's not complete only are validation. It's com I mean, literally complete validation. You've got this Hadoop world really is the cherry on top of the ice cream because it just crosses over with the, the, the business awareness yeah, of the yeah. problems, right? Like when you got business practitioners in the audience, of a geek talk. Yeah, that's yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's happening. Yeah, no. So you got a market. 
Yeah, precisely. And, you know, you know, shame on us if we don't leverage this opportunity to produce, you know, some of the greatest open source. So, you know, I'll tell our guys that I really perceive this, as, you know, over the next two years, Cloudera has really got a chance to become the second most significant open commercial open source software vendor that's ever been built, right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, we'll see about taking it. Hadoop's already the fastest growing project in Apache history, so that's... Yeah, exactly. And crazy. obviously Red Hat's done an incredible job with Linux, and, and they're, you know... They're number one, and they're going to be for a while. But you know that—that that to me, I, I, I reflect on the historical significance pretty regularly, and I'm very excited to be part of it. And I, I know our guys are as well. Let's talk about we had the guy from uh, Yale on, Adapts, Adapts founder, Total Geek. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Total geeking out, done three companies. This guy's just like playing in a candy store, building stuff. As and a gets teenager. Spun out. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so you know that's kind of the marketplace. So you know we're talking about data science. Uh -huh. You're building a data science team. So first, tell us uh, before we drill, drill into data science. Talk about the, what you're doing at Cloudera around data science, uh -huh. your team and your goals, and what is a data scientist? I mean, this is now, <laughs> a new, you know, is it the DBA for Hadoop? Or, oh, no, no. You know, what, you know. Sure, sure. What, so what, what's, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so, you yeah. know, to kind of reflect on the genesis of the term, you know, when we were building out the data team at Facebook, we kind of had two classes of analysts. We had uh, data analysts who were more traditional um, business intelligence, you know, building CAN reports, performing data retrieval queries, doing, you know, lightweight analytics. And then we had research scientists who were often PhDs and things like sociology uh, or economics or psychology. And they were doing much more of the deep dive longitudinal uh, complex modeling exercises. And uh, I really wanted to combine those two things. I didn't want to have those two folks be separate in the same way that we combined engineering and operations on our data infrastructure group. So uh, I literally just took data analyst and research scientist and put them together and called it data scientist. Um, um, so, so that's kind of the, the origin of the title. Uh, and then how that's translated and what we do at Cloudera. So I've recently hired two folks into a, uh, a burgeoning data science group at Cloudera. So the way we see the market evolving is that, you know, the infrastructure is going to be commoditized. You know, you're going to get open source uh, distributed data management and analysis tools uh, from, you know, the, the vendor who provides the best documentation, support, training, certification, uh, services, et cetera. And we, we firmly believe Cloudera is that vendor. But it, that's not going to be your comparative advantage. We're going to have thousands of customers soon, right? So your comparative advantage is going to come from how you use those uh, tools to derive business value. And so we've gone out and we've hired folks from Google, you know, from Yahoo Research, my background at Facebook. And these are the, you know, the people who are the best in the world at using these tools. They've been doing it for, you know, uh, up to a decade. Uh, and so we're, you know, the, when you look at the, the Google tools, which came before Hadoop is open source. So uh, what we're trying to do is, you know, really go in, uh, understand our customer base, extract their, their use cases, identify commonalities, and then build example applications, which demonstrate both to people who are not yet Cloudera customers, as well as who are existing Cloudera customers, how that they can, they can derive business value uh, from, from from our software infrastructure. Uh, so we, you know, we've got two folks now, we're growing to six in the first half of next year, and we spend, uh, we spend a lot of our time just talking to customers and writing code. Same kind of profile you were talking about, the mix of, is there a certain profile in the hiring? Uh, yeah, cool. yeah. I'm, uh, mostly, I'm looking for people who've done it before, who've taken you know a large-scale distributed file system and MapReduce infrastructure, as well as the attendant tools for data collection, data structuring, uh, and analysis, and they've built complex solutions which drive you know millions of dollars in in revenue generation. And so, I'm taking people who've done that before and having them ingest uh, other businesses' requirements and generate code, which will do that for them. So, yeah, we look for a mix of you know you know engineering excellence as well as a background in statistics and machine learning to be able to understand the modeling algorithms, but most importantly, uh, you know, the communications capacity to interact with a business user, ingest their requirements, and translate it into software which will meet those requirements. You're really acting as a business, I mean, as an accelerant for your customers, right? Oh yeah, for sure. That's exactly what we're trying to do, is to close the gap between, you know, it's a lot to comprehend. Like even the distributed file system and MapReduce, which are two of like, you know, the 16 open source projects that we distribute to them, even those are hard to grok for our customers. So to expect them to not only understand how the technology works, but then to think through how to apply that technology to their business is a bit too much early on. So we, we've really invested in uh, performing that function for our customers and then training them to do that themselves. Let's talk about that because that's, you know, priming the pump, obviously, because the demand is so high for the solutions, they don't yet have the personnel in place. What's the mindset uh, for, for the folks that are looking to either your customers, Cloudera customers, or Hadoop customers, mm -hmm. or engineers and developers, that matter, who are new to the game, mm -hmm. who might not have done that before because, you know, if that's the criteria, you're going to hire the best of the best, but soon you know you got everybody, and it's like, well, I've never done it. 
Right. So you got to do it. Someone's got to start, right? Yeah, so what's yeah. the mindset to really be a data scientist? I mean, you know, what is, uh, we should be thinking about, I mean, there's no real manual. I mean, most people are born with it, math skills, economics, yeah, and yeah. these kinds of disciplines you mentioned. What should someone prepare themselves? How do they approach it? How does uh, <laughs> someone say, hey, I want to hire a data scientist? How do I fill the rec yeah. form? Yeah, yeah. These kinds of things. Well, I tend to, you know, I played a lot of sports growing up, and there's this phrase, you know, of, of being a gym rat, um, which is someone who's always in the gym just practicing uh, whatever sport it is that they love. And I find that most uh, data scientists are sort of data rats. They're always, uh, they're always going out, grabbing a new data, you know, they hear like, oh, Yandex has uh, a new data set, and they've got a competition for it. So I immediately go and download that data set, you know, pull it into uh, Pandas and Python, and then just, you know, manipulate it, just check out what's going on, and you just, so you're, there's a genuine curiosity about seeing what's happening in data that, that you really can't teach. But uh, in terms of the skills that, you, that are required, I didn't really find any one uh, background to be perfect. Uh, so I actually put together a course at uh, the University of California, Berkeley, and taught it uh, this spring uh, called Introduction to Data Science. And uh, I'm teaching it, again, uh, teaching it again this coming spring. And they're actually going to put it into the core curriculum uh, in the fall of next year for computer science. And so uh, what I really try to do is break down what are the things which I see people use frequently in practice which are not taught well in the undergraduate curriculum. So the five components of that introduction to data science course are number one, uh, data collection and integration. Uh, so, you know, oftentimes in a machine learning or statistics class, you're handed a perfectly cleansed uh, data set. You're not actually asked to go out and, uh, and acquire that data set and integrate it with your existing data. Uh, and so I find that's a, that's a core skill that isn't taught well. Uh, the second uh, component is uh, visualization design, particularly dashboard design. So once you've kind of collected and integrated a data set, the first thing you want to do is see what's going on in there. Uh, and so visualization is still um, remarkably not taught at a lot of universities, but even when it is taught, uh, it's often taught more uh, on just the chart design. So we're trying to go beyond chart design and also go into dashboard design. So guys like Stephen Few uh, make a lot of money by teaching people how to do this um, in seminars. And I think integrating it into the undergraduate curriculum uh, makes sense. The third uh, component of the course is on uh, large-scale experimentation. So most uh, large web properties have a sophisticated A-B testing infrastructure. And they're able to rapidly design uh, new features and then deploy them to be tested. Uh, and so they define certain objective functions that they want to see how um, how the, you know feature A performs against feature B and make a decision based on the data about what to deploy. So we talk about what that looks like in practice. Uh, the four like simulations and stuff? What not? Uh, you know, standard hypothesis testing um, uh, which is taught, which is often not taught as much in the undergraduate statistics curriculum as sort of uh, distribution design. You know, things like t-tests are taught. Um, so putting a t-test in context, what does it look like to actually deploy that? Uh, the fourth component of the course is on causal inference and observational studies. So the majority of data, you know, I had a, a nonlinear dynamics professor who started off a course in college once by saying uh, dividing the world into linear and nonlinear dynamics is like dividing the world into bananas and not bananas. And that's kind of how I feel about experimentation versus observational studies. Uh, everything is an observational study. It's very rare that you get to control um, the assignment of treatments to subjects. Uh, you're often essentially handed those assignments uh, and forced to do as much causal inference as possible. And I've often found when people say, we found nuggets in this data, what they actually mean is they've performed some form of causal inference and they're able to say that if we do X, then Y will happen. Uh, so I try and t teach sort of emerging techniques. You know, guys like Judea Pearl in the late 80s and early 90s really made huge strides in how to do causal inference and in observational studies. And those methods are just now finding their way into everyday social sciences. Um, so I try and uh, teach that to the, to the folks. And then the fifth and last component of the course is on data products. So it's about, you know, uh, oftentimes people know how to fit machine learned models, but once you have that model, how do you deploy that into production? And then how do you, how do you set up a regular refresh cycle? And how do you evaluate the performance of that model once it's in production? So things like people you may know. This is the classic cross-disciplinary trend that's required now. I mean, you have, it used to be you're great at math, sit in this chair, perform these functions, great. Now you really need to have this cross-discipline. Especially in CS too, you know. Yeah, there's really a focus, I think, on um, staying, you know, hewing close to reality, staying close to the data. You know, when I first went down to Wall Street and worked as a quant, uh, not that far from here, 
uh, back in 2005, you know, my boss sat in a room with a whiteboard and a drawer full of papers, and that's how he did his job. Uh, whereas today, I think the people who are really driving innovation on Wall Street are doing their job by, you know, gathering data sets and interacting with them in an iterative fashion using tools like R. Uh, so I think that we really over-rotated on complex modeling and under-rotated on, you know, data munging and data analysis. Yeah, and, and, and you added, I guess it's part of five, but you and your team are looking for people who have actually done it before and generated what you said is millions of dollars in, oh, yeah. in, in value from this. Uh, which I guess is, like I say, a component of data products. But uh, what sports did you play growing up? <laughs> uh, I played baseball in college. I played, I played, I played a lot of baseball, too. And I, yeah. I never met anybody <laughs> who actually spoke like you did on the baseball field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my final question, it's great to have you on theCUBE. This is fantastic. You can do a whole hour segment on this stuff. It's great. You know, obviously, Silicon Angle's motto is where computer science meets social science. Uh, so yeah. we love this stuff, and we totally agree with you 100%. Um, my final question is more around the corner. What do you see happening around the corner? Okay, so let's just kind of walk through Cloudera's position, and Duke's growing, data's now right. the rage, everyone's grokking the data and they're playing with it. Customers are growing, cloud's growing, mobile's growing, right. social's growing, so society's changing. What's going <laughs> to happen with the data? How do you envision the future? Yeah, What's I think um, you know. Other than closing the obvious enterprise gaps in terms of um, you know business continuity, high availability, uh, security, and encryption, uh, so those are the obvious things which are going to come down the pipe. Um, I think that you know we're really going to add the facility to um, perform interactive data analysis and not just batch data analysis uh, to the platform. Uh, and then I think there's going to be uh, tremendous innovation in uh, in the data integration and, and preparation side. So you know when I sat down with uh, you know the largest customer of SaaS, and you know they have well over a thousand seats. And SaaS, of course, being one of the most powerful analytical tools on the market, I was I was hoping to learn how they performed analysis. And what they told me was very surprising. They said, you know, I would estimate that greater than ninety percent of our usage of SaaS licenses is for ETL and data manipulation. Uh, so that that to me is the great. Um, that's the huge problem to be solved in this space. I think that um, you know things like model selection uh, are going to go the same route as access path selection in databases. So you know if you if you go back to the 60s and 70s, people are writing their own uh, algorithms for you know joining data sets uh, and then choosing between algorithms uh, to perform those joins, and then eventually that just gets put into uh, that's that's decided by the computer today. And so I think the same thing is going to happen in terms of model selection uh, with data analysis, where you're going to see you know we're going we're not going to be debating the merits of, uh, of greater boosted regression trees versus you know my favorite um, you know lasso or something like that all of those um, those parameters of the variety of uh, modeling algorithms will be handed to the computer and the computer will make that decision so the really interesting piece um, for human beings is going to be on identifying new data sets integrating those data sets um, with with your existing data and then performing kind of the feature engineering task of what do we feed into uh, this modeling algorithm and then which problems do we point it at and that you know that 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 then leads you upstream to the problem of, uh, well, to generate more data, we need to instrument more of, uh, of the world. So I think there's going to be a huge uh, boom in, in instrument, instrumentation. So you're seeing this in things like the quantified self movement. So the more that we measure, the more that we can analyze. So I think that'll be, the future is really moving towards ubiquitous measurement plus uh, data integration and preparation tools. All right, Jeff Heimerbacher, thanks so much for that insight. Great, epic uh, talk here on theCUBE. Uh, another another epic conversation <laughs> shared with the world live. Uh, congratulations on the on the funding. Another Thank forty so million. It's great validation. You bet. And uh, congratulations for essentially being part of the data science and finding that whole movement. Facebook and and uh, now with Amar Abadala and the team at Cloudera, you've done a great job. So congratulations. And congratulations Thank you very much. on the, all the competition. <laughs> <laughs> keeping you keeping okay. you moving faster. It's capitalism, right? All right. Keep it on our toes. Okay, we'll Take be right back.